Series Bowls on ABC Sport and a big and final welcome to you to the Warilla Bowls Club for the final of the World Cup singles for the men. And it's the final that everyone was hoping for. What a match in prospect this is. It's Jeremy Henry of Ireland up against Australia's Commonwealth Games gold medalist Kelvin Kirko. Ian Shubak is with me. And Shui, I think this is potentially one of the best matches we could hope to see. Oh, Steve, it couldn't be better than the two semi-finals. I mean, they were a brilliant exhibition of bowls. Kirko wasn't at his best then, but today, we, as you mentioned, it's the final everyone wanted. Would you back either man on this particular surface? Yes, I'd back both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an even money bet. Kirko, he, you know, he's one of the top ranked players in the world. Jeremy Henry, he's won the World Outdoor Singles about six years ago. Great match today. Drew Morfitt's looking forward to it as well. He joins Ian in commentary for the final. Thanks, Steve, and a big crowd here to watch this men's final. Jeremy Henry has the mat, the Irishman against Kelvin Kirko. And Eric Johannes, once again, is our marker, who has been the marker during all our televised events at the World Cup. He is big, Jeremy. And I mean big. His exhibition of bowling in the semi-final against Billy Melloy's The Scott was just something to behold. One of the finest televised bowls matches ever. Their group around the jack was just phenomenal. So he's in terrific form, but so is Kelvin Kirko. The opening bowl was something to beat, and Kelvin beats it. Rush is the outdoor club where Jeremy plays. His indoor club is Belly Money. Just uh, north of Belfast. Mm. Call from the marker there, Eric Johannes said to Kirko, you're very close. I think you are one down. Players like to know, don't mind the marker being wrong. Oh, is this what we're in for? Just couldn't promote his bowl. Unusual for him. Commonwealth Games gold medalist from the Melbourne Commonwealth Games last year, Kelvin Kirko. Famous for taking his shirt off and being chaired around the rink after he won the gold. He ripped it off, uh, Drew, and the shot bowl goes clean out for three. What a conversion. Mm. He was very fortunate there, Kirk. I got the absolute dream result. Jeremy Henry, the big man. He's three down. Oh, super shot. I think he may have cut the damage to one. Just one, mate, or two? Uh, two, according to Eric. Looks like we'll give the Australian two. <laughs> Kelvin Kirko has been given, has kept the mat, and he's gone for a short end. 
Yes, Drew, he's um, repeating his tactic in the semi-final um, where Kelvin are going away from the club, had the mat back and short ends. But Ian Merrion from Guernsey on 9-6-8-4. Jeremy tried a long end on the opening end of this final. It's a massive change of, uh, of weight going from a 33 metre length to this is about 24 and a half, maybe 25 metres. Jack going either way now. Jeremy has a very heavily biased bowl. A lot more turn on Jeremy's bowl. They come from further out than Kelvin. Very watch the swoop on the bowl now. Had the line perfect. Front shot to my last ball. Eric. Another foot. Kirko trying to add a foot of weight and he's dropped a couple. Holding three. like hanging out for a long time and it'll finish up going sideways at the end. But the bias kicks in just as the bowl starts to slow, Drew, and look, it almost comes at 90 degrees at the death. Look at the angle of the bowl. And that's the advantage of having a wider drawing bowl. It's a lot easier to draw around short bowls. So Kelvin Kirko has three seconds, so he'll be playing just over draw away to rest that green bowl out, making contact with about half a metre to a metre of running. It looks to be under the line, but he does have a short bowl on the run in. Two rolls for the shot. Absolute perfect weight because that was plan B. If Kirko contacted that solid, which he did, he knew he couldn't afford to hit it with more than a metre or two of running. Almost impossible for Jeremy to get this shot. He tried to turn Kirko's bowl out, but he's got to be very, very careful not to be too heavy. Can ill afford to flick his nearest bowl away from the jack. He might have the shot bowl or the jack. Oh, he's made beautiful. three shots, Drew. What a bowl from the Irishman. Three shots to Jeremy Henry of Ireland. And if that is a taste of what we're about to get in this final, stand by. Oh, well, they started off retaining the mat. Now they're giving it away as fast as they can. Yes, well, that's an indication that Jeremy is happy to play either length, long or short. And I think Kelvin would be happy to go back to the shorter range. This is two and a half metres over minimum. 25 and a half metre length rolled. Absolutely nailed the jack with the opening bowl. And falls directly in front. Jeremy be thinking, why did I give the mat away? Checking the television monitor there to see if there's a gap between. Some players of this class may You'd be thinking, will I drive now and flick it, hit it hard now, or should I build one or two close bowls and then attack? Conventional tactics. 
at two seconds and then convert. Be happy with that. <laughs> Springing the jack a metre back. Amazing for a, such a big man, Jeremy. He's, mm. got, he, he's got such terrific touch. Put him in the front row. Kirko pulls the switch onto the backhand. Indoor pairs, Commonwealth Games, a couple of silver medals, 2002 and 2006. So a great record for a bloke 33 years of age. <laughs> Number three coming in for Kelvin Kirko. Not happy at all, Kirk. Like he, <laughs> he's such a perfectionist these days. And, and, oh, Jeremy might open the head up here. I think he's going to wind up for a powerhouse drive. No, he's playing. He switches to the backhand. There's a wall of bowls coming in. He would never miss that target with weight, but sneaking around Kirko's bowl. Oh, oh, he if he gets past, this is a miracle shot. Oh. Not quite. It's worth the risk. Holding one, opportunity to make four. And he's going for it. He's got the plant, the two red bowls. He could give the shot away. Onto the jack. No damage. No change. Solid. Now this shot is fraught with danger. I'm not sure what Je Jeremy, uh, if he plays weight here, the biggest danger, if he feathers that bowl, his own bowl goes clean out. And if he runs through the gap and hits nothing else, Jeremy goes four down. At the moment, he's one down. And it, I think it's a good result, one down for Jeremy Henry. <laughs> he's just spotted the danger on the backhand and said, oh, uh, just practice a draw shot and go one down. No way he can get the shot on the forehand. Good tactics. I think it's only one. Maybe two. I'm voting for two. Two. Kirko wants two. He's got it. Mm. So Kelvin Kirko goes to the lead with those two. It's 5-4 in the opening set. We're well, looking at Kelvin Kirko's technique. Gets the bowl away very smoothly, Kelvin Kirko. Well balanced at the point of release. Kirko has given away the mat again to Jeremy Henry. Seventh end of nine. Six four, the Australian. And Henry's bowl with a run at the jack. Brilliant opener. Both players now electing to give the mat away, preferring to play last. I think the sets play was brought in for a couple of reasons, Drew. It's obviously shorter games, um, but really I think Rob Perella from Australia was one that was just killing so many ends in major tournaments that uh, this rule of no dead ends was brought in to respot the jack when it's propelled off the ring, which tactically makes it a little bit difficult at times because you always might need to be aware of how many bowls you have at the back of the rink. He 
wasn't happy with that opening bowl on the forehand, so he said, I think I can get closer on the backhand. <laughs> what, the first one missed by four, four inches? <laughs> that wasn't the reason. He, <laughs> he just couldn't get to the jack clean on the forehand. What a brilliant switch. This um, end is not looking good. It's early days, but not looking good for Kirk. Oh, well, that's second shot. Might be still two to Jeremy Henry. It's fascinating that Kirk will start ask down, one or two down. Really close, Calvin. Very close, but no opinion. Fascinating that um, Kirko knows that if he could win this end, he's almost home. Jeremy Henry also knows that, and look at the quality of Jeremy's two bowls. Pretty upset with himself, uh, Kirko. He's talking to himself every time he doesn't play a perfect bowl. Looking at the grips. Um, Fingers more closely together underneath the bowl from Jeremy, whereas Kelvin's wrist is a lot more relaxed. Notice the fingers underneath the bowl, Kirko's more behind. Totally different setup. What Jeremy will try for here, Drew, is to sit on the Kirko bowl behind the jack. Believe it or not, the top players visualize this. And as this bowl comes near the head, and he'll visualize falling back onto the shot bowl hope it falls down and he's definitely three. Beautiful attempt. <laughs> Another shake of the head from Kirko. One so far. I'm by. I'm by. These are the calipers. You'll be very careful not to move the bowl or jack. You'd err on the side of moving the bowl, wouldn't you? Because it won't move as much. Yep. So it was just one. Mm. Oh, what a match we have here. It is 6 5 to Kirko after seven ends. Ian Merrion from Guernsey, who played Kelvin Kirko in the semi final. Lost at 9 6 8 4, but uh, had a fantastic tournament. shortest end of the match. This is just marginally over the 23 metre markers on the side of the rink. Force. Well, he's driving first up. Sweaty palm. Made me movement in the crowd. When you draw, draw shots require a light grip, the drives a heavy grip on the bowl. It's a nice, firm grip. So a drive first up, brave tactic. Unusual, isn't it? Well, he must feel he can hit it, Drew. Out she goes. What a drive. Excellent accuracy. It was going to be hard to beat trying to outdraw it. Well, Jeremy knows he must win this end. That's the reason he drove early. And see, Kirko, he hasn't put it back. It's a great bowl, but the big man from Bally Money 
after a full-blooded drive to come back to a delicate draw shot. Very, very easy to be overweight. Got the shot. This is dangerous. Kirko staying on the forehand must avoid his first bowl. Just like that. That's the shot, but. One good measure. Still available. Both players would feel heart and mind that they could beat those three bowls up there 23 metres away. Missed the line. have to pull the switch now, surely, Kirko, to the backhand side. He's got to be a little bit careful, though, not to be narrow. Can he afford to slice the jack? So he'll just try to beat the bowl there at 3 o'clock to the jack. Well, that, I don't believe, is another shot. Gee, the expression suggests a drive. <laughs> it stays the same. Kirko will lead by two with one end of play. There is a gap for the shot bowl clean, but he's also considering the whole three of them going. He got everything but the shot bowl. So status quo. It'll be one to Kelvin Kirko. And it is indeed a two-shot lead with one end to play in the first set. Just looking at Jeremy, this is uh, not the drive, this is the forehand draw shot. The weight goes almost straight down the line and the arm goes in a different direction. A very big frame, Jeremy, and uh, needs to get that right hip out of the way. Ninth and final end of the opening set. Henry needs two shots to draw, three to win. If we do have a tied set, the, whichever player wins the second set will win the title. Unless that is tied, and then we'll have a tiebreaker. Fairly long end, mat up two metres, 30 metres away from the mat. The jack has been rolled. That's how we've reached 7 5 to the Australian. Henry, a good opening bowl. Kirko's reply is even better. Kirko started with a double in the first end of this final. Then he lost the lead in the second end. Regained the lead on the fifth end. And has just held it in the last three ends. So. Very important here for Jeremy. Oh, he hasn't passed the jack, and the plant is onto the jack. You see the, two, the angle of the two bowls. So that does not favour the Irishman at the moment. You'll have to be thinking conversion weight already. Kirko would know that. He'll try to trail the jack away or sit this bowl oh, what? right on the line. Uh, but the plant is on. Jeremy might come down and have a look at this. It's a big end. What a shot from Kelvin Kirko. Uh, he's having, just working on the monitor, and it's going to be a drive. He's going to try to... I'm not 
not sure whether he'll go for the shot bowl. Like he might go for the two bowls alongside the jack. Come off. Oh, yeah, he was after the two red bowls. It was a great attempt. Gee, that was a great attempt. You could see that the two bowls were slightly in front of the shot bowl, and he's looking for the inside edge of one red bowl onto the shot bowl. And that's good enough for the first set. There's no way Kirko will drop two from... <laughs> Gee, that's just not fair. They're both touches. That is not fair. <laughs> Jeremy gives Kelvin a slight smirk and says, well, yeah, that's not bad, buddy. There's, there's only one remote opportunity, and Jeremy knows what it is. He's got to play about four metres of weight, feather the front bowl, come off that and get that ball out. It's hard enough on a billiard table with a cue in your hand, but from 30 metres away to get a sixteenth of an inch contact on one bowl is very, very difficult indeed. Missed him. That is the first set gone. Kirko will not play his last bowl. <laughs> And that is the first set, 9-5 to Kelvin Kirko. Well, we saw a variety of shots in that first set. Most of the drives came from Jeremy Henry, but it was the close drawing of this man that put him under so much pressure. And look at that three red balls count. Those first two are unfair, and this last one in the ninth end was just the nail and really broke the nail. World Cup men's singles final at Warilla. Australia going for the double. Men's and women's after Judy Nardella. <laughs> Such a quick player, Kelvin Kirko. He's on the mat, ready to bowl almost before his opponent's bowl stops rolling. He's in a good zone. Yeah, he, he's... Uh, gone to another level in the last few years, Drew. Since that Commonwealth Games gold medal in the singles, I, well, here goes Jeremy with weight again. So we've gone from finesse drawing to powerful running, driving, and quite a few misses in the last couple of ends. His self-belief, Kelvin Kirko, I think is as high as any player in the world at present. And a very good effective rate. He's actually slightly trailing Jeremy, but leading on the scoreboard. Tuck the jack out of sight. He won't be happy with that. He wanted solid contact on either jack or bowl. Sliced the jack out in the open, holding two. And we'll probably end up one down when this bowl comes to rest. Doesn't want to hit that ball. Well, he needed the inside edge, uh, Drew, not the outside. So he's just... The luck is not with the big Irishman. Kirko, also looking for the inside edge. Flush contact. Change of hand for Henry. He's lucky, really, Jeremy, to be so close, Drew. You know, he's leading 1-0 in the second set, but 
Kirko is playing the better bowls, but... He's asked the question. Thank you for two. I've got two for sure. That's not what he said. He said he fancied him for two. Yes, <laughs> Colin. Just drop that bowl a little on the delivery. Drop the three. Well. well, maybe one in, one out. Didn't want to move the jacket. Did he? Oh, this three, yes. Well. Jeremy Henry has gone for a drive early, quite often. Uh, this time it was later in an end. Bang, bowls going everywhere. And just hasn't had a lot of luck. Got those two bowls, but missed the shot bowl. He's been in good solid training for this for the fortnight while he's been in Australia. <laughs> Built himself up beautifully for the can, task at hand. Can be a sign of frustration when a player starts driving so much. Drew, and he's had a, quite a few drives and several misses. This is the pressure that Kelvin Kirko is putting on with a close one to start most ends. Well, that's right. Sooner or later, your nerves almost crack and you think, oh, I'll just release the tension and have a drive. So important tactically if you start driving and have a few misses that you go back to the draw shot. There's Judy Nardella who won the women's singles in a fantastic result over Lorna Trigwell, the South African. So Australia going for the double with Kelvin Kirko. But he walked away and didn't even watch the end of that. He raised that one from the memory bank, Drew. Mm. Port Rush. As the outdoor club, Belly Money, the indoor. Kirko's bowled a hard one to beat, but it's beaten. That's short too. It's a repeat of the other one. Yeah, that's just a total lapse in concentration. Kirko leading 3-1. Jeremy uh, back on song with his draw shots. and He'd like to just rest on his previous bowl and just sort of tighten the head up a little bit. Fall directly in front of the jack. Must be very careful here, Kelvin. He'd like to get the shot, but cannot really afford to lose this bowl out of the head. Jeremy could look for the Kirko bowl and very well. Wow, Kirko's turned his back. Well, that's three, three in a row. Three in a row, which he just now can Henry get to the second shot with weight? <laughs> He's looking for it. Two thirds. One. Well, if he's only got one third, the tactic is just a draw shot only. He was just happy with one. Funny bowls in that end. One shot to Jeremy Henry. Kelvin 
Jerko might have to forget that previous end, where he bowled three bowls in a row. He just about they were so short that he turned his back on them. Yeah, I think Drew is just so relaxed in this final. He almost fell asleep. <laughs> Looks like Jeremy's going to drive again. I, um, just controlled weight, not a flat out drive, and I don't think this is a good tactic at all. I just said earlier that, you know, if you have a few drives and a few misses, you've got to then hold your nerve, come back and start drawing shots. The reason you don't continue to drive if you're missing is that you lose the feel for weight in your draw shots. So it's very important for Jeremy to try to outdraw Kirko. <laughs> now you can have a full-blooded drive, Jeremy. Smack that red bowl on the left of the jack and somebody in the grandstand might catch the jack. So this time will be, no, just controlled weight. It's got one bowl. Best possible result, that, for Kirko. It's OK. Okay. okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, I think it's okay, mate. No, it's There's a Jeremy Henry bowl right at the back of the rink, and uh, yeah. Eric Johannes was about to pick it up, and both the players said, no, it's on the line. The rink peg on the bank there, the white peg indicates the edge of the rink. Show me where the dot is down there, Eric. Is that ball jack high to the dot, or...? Uh, two balls. <laughs> this is real cat and mouse. <laughs> I don't think Jeremy. The Kirko's trying to draw to the spot. If the red, the shot bowls hit, the jack goes off the rink. It'll be re-spotted one and a half metres in, two metres from the ditch. And there's the spot. On the spot, yeah. Who's got the spot? Um, Calvin? There's the spot. Mate, yours. And Jeremy, according to Eric Johannes, says the green bowl is going to be the shot if the jack ends up on the spot. So Jeremy perhaps will have a drive. Try to propel the jack off the rink. Well, he's got it off the rink. <laughs> well, what an extraordinary end of bowls. I've had three shots from Henry. They've all been drives. Yep. And he's going to end up with a shot here. One bowl each to be played. There were two spots there. Uh, that was yeah. <laughs> the reason they have two, sorry, Drew, I picked the wrong one. The reason they have two, in case there's a bowl on one of the spots, then the jack goes on the other. This is the spot that's level with the tee, two metres from the ditch. And Jeremy Henry <laughs> is still one down. <laughs> Will he have a drive? Maybe see four drives. Tactically, it's a draw shot. But the big man from Belly Money is winding up with weight for the fourth time in a row. He's got the shot. <laughs> well, practice makes perfect. Just a little raise of the eyebrows to Kirko, say, so, yep, I'll take one. Well, I hope you agree, but nothing's ever dull with the Irishman. It's real second set. Oh, that's the right one. Short end here. Yes, yeah, 24 metres. Touch of Kirko, and maybe a fifth drive in a row coming up. There's Lorna Trigwell who lost the final, and there's the girl who beat her. It was a, a match between the two blondies. Five in a row for the Irishman, and his first miss. Kirko is running for the spot. This is a deliberate attempt to draw to the spot at the back of the rink. 
Yeah. Look, he, he's couldn't, he a can't see the spot. He's, he, a touch he's just about put it right on. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> I mean, I can understand bowling to a jack, but when you you can't see that spot from the other end. Yeah, but he knows it's two metres from the ditch, one and a half metres away from the centre line. And he's all... Oh. Now, this is... I think this is silly tactics. This is really silly. He's got nothing to gain. Best result, to clip the bowl off and not move the jack, maybe, but silly. I just think that's six... Uh, is it six in a row? Yeah. Six drives in a row. The reason I'm saying it's silly is because you just can lose the feel for your draw shot. Now Kirko will probably draw maybe a metre behind the jack. And now we'll see Sanity prevail and the Irishman will draw a shot on the backhand. Maybe. No, he would not be. <laughs> He's not a world-class player for nothing, Drew. He knows what he should be doing. But after six drives, can he hold this bowl back? Inside edge? No. Still two down. He might have forgotten that he came out for the World Cup. Thought he'd come out for the Grand Prix. <laughs> Kirko now trying to cover and count. Metre behind on the forehand wing. Now, tactically, Jeremy Henry must dead draw. Second shot would be a good result. Currently stands at three all second set. Could trail the jack or rest the bowl. And what result does he get? He's turned Kirk over for shot. <laughs> what a brilliant <laughs> shot for Jeremy Henry. Well, <laughs> we saw eight bowls at that end. Probably about eight different bowls. We saw everything. Start of the sixth end, 4-3 to Jeremy Henry. Kelvin Kirko took the first set, 9-5. Irish, Irishman's on a roll here, Drew. He's three ends in a row. Mm. Kirko's peppering the jack and hasn't been able to score on the last three ends. That's right, he's been getting touches and resting here, balls. Here we go for another drive. Surely not. Wow. He's putting on a show for the spectators. Jeremy Henry, swing and a miss. Now, you've convinced me that indoor bowls is usually about drawing and that the drive is not the go well, for indoor. It saves you shots, Drew. You draw for dough, you drive for show. Here's a cliche, and uh, Kirko now just tucks this jack out of sight. No. He, he's got to sooner or later get back on the draw, but guess what? The tactic's working. Look at those effectives. Dead level. See a drive now. Two, two or three. All right. If it's two down, he'll drive. If it's three down, he'll play the conversion shot. Two. Two. So that suggests a drive. Two red bowls are 30 centimetres apart. Flush contact on the front one. The other one will go. The jack is also available. He's primed for this drive. He's been rehearsing this for the last 10 minutes. Okay, it's just one down now. <laughs> OK, 
Kirko's bowls have got plenty of bruises on them after this <laughs> final. <laughs> They've been thumped and hit and smacked around like you wouldn't believe. And Kirko, well, a short game. Jeremy asked again, just with a hand signal rather than words. Like just the one, Jeremy. Yeah, well, it's too dangerous to drive now because uh, Jeremy only has one bowl in four. So he's only one down. The way he's playing, you, you wouldn't back against him drawing this. Yep. Run it out. second set. Oh, one of the most entertaining <laughs> matches we've seen a long, in a long, long time. Jeremy Henry providing plenty of action and Kirko with precision. Accurate draw shots. Henry with powerful drives and accurate running shots. And Kirko, he's just in love with the jack. Yes, his opening bowl has just put so much pressure on the Irishman. Around Kirko's bowl, in there for shot. Why is he messing with all those drives? Well, he's releasing a uh, good aerobic exercise, Drew. Mm. You mentioned he's been in heavy training here at this event. I think trouble is, I think some of that training's been held at night. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not sure it's quite appropriate. He's got a big reputation, the man from Ireland. Well, he... I believe it was the uh, exchange <laughs> rate. He thought they were giving away beers in Australia. Oh, happy hour, mate. He was, you know. <laughs> That's number two. Calvin Kirko said he was drinking twice as much as normal, Jeremy, because he, that way he could save more money. <laughs> more he drank, more he saved. <laughs> He just won't let up, Kirk, eh, will he? Oh, gee, he is uh, relentless. Super stuff from the man from South Tweed Heads. Jeremy now will play a conversion shot on the backhand, a look to have solid contact on the Kirko shot bowl with about a metre or two of running. Looks to be too wide at that with that weight. Jeez, it's been one of the quickest games. Mm. There's no time wasting whatsoever from either player. Which is handy when you've got to catch a play. <laughs> oh, look at Kelvin Kirko. Wonderful to watch. Two shots for the Australian and a 6-4 lead. Eighth end, 6-4 to Kelvin Kirko. He's already a set up. Two shots through to Kirko on this end. They'll be shaking hands and Kirko will be the World Cup champion. Jeremy Henry must win the second set. A tie is no good. So Kirko, if he's four ahead with one to play, that's enough. Good opener from the visitor.
he'll get this. He even rolled the green ball back. Drew Morfitt, not only an expert sports commentator, he's a psychic. <laughs> it's one of the most consistent exhibitions of top class play we've seen Drew from Kirko. He just has not let up. Jeremy's thrown everything at, at Kelvin. He just has always been that one or two shots behind. Kirko led 6-5 after seven ends in the first set. Now he's leading 6-4. Kirko knows that uh, he only needs two shots to pre prevent this match going to a ninth end, but he'd be just very happy with the one. This is a very good shot here for Jeremy. One down, two seconds, backhand with three metres of weight. Oh, he's got more than three metres. He does not want movement of the jack. Looking for Kirko's bowl without the jack. No. Just too big a weight. Poor choice of weight. Now Jeremy's walking to the head and he'll realise he's in bigger trouble now. Especially if Kelvin draws this. Just one. Just flopped over, but still probably just one. Yeah, close for the second, Drew. It's, um, oh, it has fallen nearer to the jack. The problem for Jeremy is that Kelvin's got one to play. I think it is only one to Kirko. There's really only one shot on to backhand conversion. Looking at the rings, it is certainly close for the second. I think you play backhand three metres, look for that bowl and stay. Tough shot, he does not want movement of the jack. He's playing big weight, well, he could lose the match with this bowl. He could lose the match. Oh, Kirko now. Well, Kirko could drive the, he could drive the bowl out for the match. Well, he's asked. who's Eric. lying shot here? Eric Johannes favours the Kirko bowl. In which case, Kelvin just needs to draw another shot. And the match is over. The only other shot... Well, Eric Johannes, he might be right. That's a, it's very close. Even Jeremy's come in for a quick look. He, he may consider driving the Jeremy Henry bowl out of the head. It's nowhere near the... The jack. Maybe the last bowl of the final. Looks to us like Kelvin's lying one. If he makes it two, he wins. This for the World Cup. Shake hands and congratulate the winner. Kelvin. <laughs> Kelvin knows it's a measure, but he <laughs> thinks he's got the title. We'll wait for the measure to decide the World Cup winner. <laughs> he getting ready? Shake hands. Kelvin Kirko is the World Cup champion. Defeating Jeremy Henry of Ireland, 9-5-8-4. And a very entertaining game of bowls. With the stakes so high, the entertainment value was through the roof.
Kelvin Kirko does it for Australia in a very entertaining final. Kelvin, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, absolute uh, over the moon, really. Uh, obviously, I've been concentrating on the uh, the indoor circuit and uh, to come and win in Australia, I guess the World Cup singles is uh, fantastic and just tops off uh, Commonwealth Games gold last year, so fantastic. When you told us this morning that you reckon you're bowling the best in your life, I found that hard to believe. You won a Commonwealth Games gold only, what, uh, 16 months ago, but those draw shots today. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I, I felt that I could improve on uh, the semi-final and uh, even in the final, it probably still wasn't my best game, I felt, but I did put the pressure on uh, Jeremy and uh, first bowl in singles. If you can put the pressure on your opposition, uh, you normally get away with it, so it's pretty much what I've done. That set you up pretty well for indoors for the rest of the year? Yeah, you know, it gives me a bit of confidence and obviously off to the UK later in the year and, uh, you know, look, I really enjoy playing on the carpet and uh, that's what my main goal is at the moment and obviously uh, I'll be going for a world indoor singles next year. Beautiful. And with Judy Nardella winning the women's, a double for Australia. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fantastic uh, for Judy. First time in the big time, I guess. And uh, absolutely, she was over the moon and so she should be. So fantastic, the double. Go Aussie. We hope you enjoyed the men's final from the World Cup at Warilla and look forward to your company again soon on Super Series Bowls. A Place to Think continues Wednesday on ABC2. Retrace the extraordinary wartime journey of a young couple and their courageous attempt to reach Australia. Mike and Stefani was made in the 1940s and the story is still as relevant today. How can the people escape from war? Separation, loneliness and chaos. A couple's relentless struggle for a better life in a new country. Moving History continues Wednesday, ABC2 and online. Good evening, Jessica Shack updating a...